All right, the other thing that I showed you today is the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin-y thing with his sticky-outy teeth and his nose. He's an ugly pumpkin. You can make a cute pumpkin, but today I'm gonna show you how to make that. Oh, you have, oh, Willie, you have a Finnick, is he Finn or Finnegan? I just love that name, it's super cute. I love that they're using old, the, 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 the youths today are picking little old-fashioned names for their kids. They're super cute. I guess it all comes around. I was a child of the 60s, so I'm not even Christina, I'm just Tina. And my brother and sister all have really short names. Uh, well, Finn is still cute. All right, so let's talk about how to make this jack-o'-lantern. Those two, this is how you start the jack-o'-lantern. Who'd have thought, huh? Um, to start the jack-o'-lantern, you're going to need some, this is called core wool. It's whatever bits of wool you have laying around. Um, this is just like leftover. I have a drum carter in the back and whenever I clean off the liquor, which is like the part that pulls off the short bits, um, Hello? Uh, oh, is it Kelly? <laughs> I'm always thrown when Black Sheep Fiber Emporium texts me on the messages when I'm on as Black Sheep Fiber Emporium. Yes, it's Kelly. Uh, so here's, this is a wadge of core wool. And I happen to have just, and those of you that spin and stuff, you probably have this laying around. Bits of stuff that you scrap that are scraps. Mine, oh, let's advertise for Safeway, don't, why don't we? Mine is just scraps of stuff that didn't card well, it's not great, but you can also just use inexpensive roving as well. And there is a bit of roving in the center of this ball. All you do is take that stuff, and I'll make a second one. Here's some, it got clean, this is cleaned wool, but it never got carded, and it's just a bit left over from other stuff that got carded, and wadge it up into a ball. That's all you do. Actually, I think this is a nice Gulf Coast um, fleece, but it's left over from stuff that I didn't do. So I wadge it up into a ball and um, take my needle felting needle. And this, I probably cannot show you, but these needle felting needles, this is why you need them. Let's see if I can get it up here close enough. Probably my phone won't do it. They have barbs on the outside. This one happens to be one of my favorites. It is a 40 gauge triangular point needle, okay? And just FYI, I can put kits together for you. So if you guys want these, the kits are, are gonna cost like 25 bucks. They will have a variety of oranges. He's a rusty orange and I'm not, I don't think I have any more rust. But what I have is um, variety of pumpkin-y oranges with some browns. And I'll put enough of the wool together and a needle and a um, piece of ethafoam, ethafoam. It's a specific foam that slightly heals itself together so that you can do it. All right, so I'm going to turn the camera now down to my hands so that you can see the wonderful, how difficult it is to needle felt. All right, so my wadge of, of um, I'm gonna tip you down now. So I can't see comments, by the way, but I'll pop up every once in a while and try to see. All right, I'm gonna tip you down to my hands and make sure all right, so here's my little bit of at the foam. I've wadged this up, and all I'm gonna do with this needle is stab, 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 stab. And I, I take, and I'm trying to turn this into not even, a, not even a tight ball, just a really loose ball. Tuck down the flyaway stuff, and I'm tacking it down. See how that tacks it down? That's now tacked down. There, that one's sticking out. I grab my hands, pull it down. Tap, 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 tap. And then see how that's stuck? And that's what that needing, need, needle felting needle does. You will be putting down some of my hair and some brown hairs on the, some other sheep that's in there. The most important piece of advice for needle felting is keep your fingers and your anything you care about out of the way because you will bleed. <laughs> These things are barbed, it's like pushing a fish hook into your skin. You're gonna have a hard time getting it out and it's gonna take your flesh with it. There, so see that's now stuck. This is sticking out, I'm gonna do that here. Stick it down, run this over, stick it down. And there's bits of vegetable matter in here, it doesn't matter. This is just giving a shape 
because we don't want to this is more expensive the colored wool and we don't want to waste our colored wool on something that's not going to be seen it's kind of the old adage of um, spend all your money on the outside of your outfits don't spend money on the underwear because nobody's gonna ever see it although I I want comfortable underwear so it's not actually how I live my life but it's kind of the same thing here there see how this just forms into a ball really quick I'm gonna get rid of that seam just sort of a little bit back it down there's a loose spot now if you get roving for this all you have to do is wrap it loosely into a ball and probably if you get a kit I'm gonna send you some roving merino works really well for this I do have some of these scraps left that I'll probably put in there if if in fact we do this I hope you can see this how's it going let me scooch up a little more okay so there's my ball okay now I'm gonna tip you back up because I'm gonna show you how to wrap the thread and I can look at oh hold your hand oh yeah I can try that let's see let's see let's see if my phone can handle that does that help can we get a focus it's I think I'm asking too much of my phone you can see that it's a little triangular but I don't think you can see the barbs all right so now I have two balls I prepped this one ahead of time just in case this took too long it doesn't take very long um, you can probably get this whole thing done in an afternoon it's not difficult at all all right so I have my pumpkin ball right and I can hey Angelus Angelus um, now what you do and again beautiful use of scrap yarn but you want to use uh, I don't think you really actually even need to use wool yarn it's easier I in my mind think that it's safer because if I happen to get some if I happen to get the outer color across that yarn and try to stab it I want it to stick but I'm pretty sure if I just went and got any old piece of cotton yarn and, yarn and pulled it tight enough it probably wouldn't even show but what I'm gonna do is take my ball I'm going to take this yarn and I'm going to needle felt it on at the top so right here I'm gonna needle felt that on but I have heard that acrylic even holds um, I haven't experimented that with that because I have lots of wool around the house there see I needle felted that in and then I'm gonna wrap it around pulling really tightly because what I'm doing so see I've just pulled that in what I'm doing and then I'm going to needle felt at the bottom to get it to stay at the bottom of my pumpkin so I needle felt it in there and I'm gonna turn directions and I'm going to and I'm gonna break this side up into thirds I'm gonna do that now do I care if this is even no I don't care if this is even and in fact this little guy purposefully uneven and if you're if you're shooting for a homely pumpkin asymmetry is what you know the we in the beauty industry we in our beautiful selves I'm needle felting this into the top it just makes it easier to turn and to pivot this one's taking a little more because it's under some pressure there so now I've just needle felted that in there and I'm starting to look like a cotton ball aren't I all right I'm gonna pivot over here and over here and there well I did that rather evenly there so I have now made segments into my floofy cotton ball pull these a little tighter so that it really pulls in and the reason we're doing this is I'm gonna layer on the orange in a minute I'm again sorry I'm looking down because I'm not paying attention to you I'm needle felting this wool yarn in so that it holds Ooh, I got some I got some orange cut on my scissors and then so here you go I've needle felted that in so I'm just gonna cut it off and yeah I used pink but it doesn't matter because I'm about to cover this up with orange all right so now I'll tip you down I have orange roving that Grayson and I dyed that um, it got a little tiny bit felty which is how I know to work great for needle felting because we did a little bit of that and this isn't listed on the website um, I have a brown curl if I want to put some bits of brown in I also have a uh, dark green bit of roving that I'm going to use for my stem 
And if if you if you happen to order the kit, um, the green will cut. That is this is the exact green you'll be getting because I have quite a bit of it, and the orange too for that matter. All right, so oh, let me tip you down. So now I'm gonna tip you down again. There. Can you see my? Can we see or are we a little close? Looks like we can see. I have to look. Crane my head. So see my little end sticking up here? I'm going to just needle felt that in. And you can really see, it's easier to see how needle felting works because you can see as it just sort of disappears into the... There. See, it disappeared. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing along the edges because I really want these to become features and to show the edges of my I always think of it it looks like little cracks in somebody's bottom and if you ever wanted to do a human figured this is probably how you do a like a wedge there's a wedge all right I'm gonna get this guy in a little bit and I'm just it's kind of a fiddle a little bit and then step back and look at it fiddle a little bit very sort of arty how do you want to decorate Okay, there are my wedges. There's my little white pumpkin. I can manipulate it. This is not precious. There. All right, now it's time to take some orange. I undid. This is a single braid of, so this is one ounce of, this is actually PCC. So this little PCC guy, oh here, I undid, I undid a braid. So here is one ounce. And we're gonna see if one ounce is enough to cover this whole thing. So, um, I'm gonna pull off some of the orange and I'm gonna lay it on. And um, this is, we're painting our pumpkin with bits of fleece. So we're gonna paint that on. Use my needle, paint it on. But see how well just that one little piece of orange covers that? Tack it on. There, I've tacked on a bit of orange. Now I'm going to pull off another piece. Pull off another piece. Tack it on. It doesn't take much. And I'm running my needle. I'm tacking it everywhere, but I'm really running my needle down the ridges. Because I every time you poke this needle in here, you're compacting the you're compacting the um, wool into tighter and tighter. And I have done I've done needle felting with gals who basically would make a pumpkin half that size. We started out with the same amount of wool. But they ended up, they poked so much that it condensed it and made it denser and therefore heavier. Where with this guy, he's light and fluffy. If I wanted to even weight him, I could. Um, like with some a stone at the bottom or something. But you don't need, it only takes the tiniest bit of, of needle felting. All we're doing, of poking, all we're doing is just trying to get this to lay over and not fall off. We don't need it to be packed in densely. So see, there I've got like one segment almost done. I'm about halfway down. There's the next bit of fluff, hair. And then I'm, see how, there I've got a bald spot right there. I'm gonna just slide up with my needle, give it a couple pokes, and it stays right in place. And then down into the valley, because most of my poking most of my poking is going to be in the valley. And there, see my valley? And I'll go back and I'll just really poke that in. Okay? And there, see? Segment. The segment is done. There. This one's, I've given him a dimple, but let's go down and focus on this valley now. There. Oh, the dog is whining. The dog is whining. All right, another segment. Just to finish off this segment. I'm going to try and get you a side so I can show you how to do the face. And 
and I just dropped my poor little pumpkin guy on the ground. Let's get you in here so you can see. I've got to keep reminding myself to get this under the camera nicely. I'll pop you back up and talk to you face to face here in a minute. There. So see, I'm covering up that segment. And even my little rusty guy, he has some parts where you can sort of see the, you can see through to the white underneath. Not completely, but it gives a dimensionality. So it's not bad to see just a little bit of white through your orange because it kind of hints at that there's flesh under there and gives some dark and light pops. Oh yeah, this one, a one ounce pony or a one ounce braid is plenty to cover this thing. There we go. Let's just cover that one up a bit, give it a little darkness. And then into the ridge. And notice I'm not folding these edges into the ridge. I'm poking them and leaving them to run because this is going to help me do the next segment. I'm prepping that next segment. And keeping my ridges there. And then here's the next ridge for my, the, I don't know, pumpkin ridges or the gores. There. So see, I've done a, a, a ridge of pumpkin. Now let me, I just dropped the other guy. He went flying. So he is, his little face is one segment here. Now that, this one's a littler segment, so I wouldn't choose to put his face here. I'm just looking to see like a nice good place to put my pumpkin face. This one sticks out a lot, so it probably wouldn't be a bad place to put his face. Uh, so uh, let's talk about his chin. So see his chin and how his teeth stick out, how he's got an underbite? All right, the way that you make his chin is to grab some layers of this. Some layers of the orange, so this takes a little bit more. And this is why you need the, this is why you need the um, ethafoam because I can hold this in my hand and do this, but I can't do this. And what I'm doing is I'm basically making a piece of fabric felt. I'm making a hunk of felted fiber. So see there how it's kind of holding together more. And then I'm going to go back and do it again. Because it's going to go over his teeth. There. And always don't keep, don't keep needle felting without lifting. Kind of like pie crust. You know, if you keep rolling and rolling from one side and you don't lift it and flap it over and apply more flour, that you're, you're going to end up with a pie crust that's been rolled into your countertop and you can't do it. You can't get it off. There, so this is going to be his underbite chin. So this is gonna be this little piece right there. So I'm gonna put it aside. The next thing I'm gonna do is make a tooth. And I need some more of that waste, some more of that waste fleece. And you know, we don't want it to, you know, perfectly white is fine, but not necessary. So I'm gonna take this and all you do to make a tooth is grab a little hunk of it and then we roll it up as tight as we can into a tube, into a little tube, there, and that's about plenty. Now, look, I can't tear that, but you know what I can do? Scissors, there's my little tube. You need to make it a little bit bigger than you want your final tube, but there's my tube. And I'm gonna do the same thing. This is probably harder to see. It's a good thing I don't have perfectly white fleece on this one. You can see the bit of yellow, but I'm rolling it, doing this, and then I'm gonna roll it the other way. Roll it the other way, because this is how you get a dimensional tooth. So I'm just making a tube. This is the, the decoration is the fiddly bit, but it's also the fun bit. There. Little fiddly tube. We're like almost, it looks almost like a silk um, cocoon, doesn't it? Keep your fingers out of the way. All right, there, I have a tooth. I have a single tooth. It's just a, bo a blob of wool, honestly, is what it is. All right, and then uh, we need a nose. 
So I'm looking at the pumpkin as I say these things. We need a nose and I'm just going to grab another bit of this, make a bigger, a bigger tube because all we're making is little rolls to, to put on. We're making lumps and I don't know if any of you have ever done clay work. Clay work you do the same thing. Like you make an eyeball and then you make a hole in your clay head and then you pop it in there. So I'm just making a blob. Not too much there. All right, that's gonna go on as my nose. I have a tooth. I have a chin. Uh, what else do I need here? Oh, I need an eyeball. Oh, let's see. I don't know that I brought any. Oh, I have some black. This is, I believe, alpaca. But I have this. Oh, and I have black in here, too. Oh, that's some of the leftover gray black. All right, here's some black. So I have a little bit of black fleece. To do the eyeball, you put those directly onto your thing. So we're going to grab a little bit. I'm going to, again, everything's done in tubes. Roll it up into a tube or into a cylinder and then roll it the other way. We're just making little bits. And if you, if you don't roll it up into a tube, you end up with little flyaways that are harder to deal with. All right, his little eyes, hmm, let's see, how am I going to do his eyes? I'm going to put his eyes here. I need to get him on the orange because I haven't put all the orange. I would, just so you know, I would cover this whole thing in orange before I started doing the details. This is sped up for the camera. So there's his little eye. I'm going to put his eye in here. One eye on my pumpkin. You could do triangles. I just did realistic eyes on this guy. There, see? There's one eye, and his eye is going to be a little receded. But, just so you know, this isn't done. So just say, oh, I don't really like that eye. All right, I can completely bury the eye, but I can also sculpt around the eye and make it not so poofy so his eye stands out more. See that? Because I've got quite a protuberance here, and I can also drop this drop this um, protuberance, however you say that word, back a little bit. All right, I'm going to check for comments. But it is really artsy craftsy. There's no one way to do this. I have one eye. One of the things that um, I learned from a teacher that I took class from, here's a nice bright white, is if you want their eyes to stand out, See his little tiny white speck in his eye? That makes the eye look more realistic. So, oh my goodness, I have a dog crying because I haven't gone to coffee yet. Or he needs to go outside. Why don't you come over here and lay on the bed, dude? I'm going to put a little, oh, too much. Just the tiniest, tiniest bit of white into his eye. I'm going to roll it up. Uh-oh, some, somebody has come in the house. Probably Grace and Sidekick. Your dog wants something. Yeah. He's whining. All right, I'm on camera, by the way. Oh. All right, so here's the sparkle in the eye. Sparkle in the eye. There. Sparkle in the eye. Now... This doesn't look as exciting as this one. This one kind of looks like a, a swamp thing, but it's all in the finishing up. And so don't think if yours initially doesn't look beautiful that it's you. It just needs some more work. So there we go. All right, so there's your eye. To get those teeth in, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to Put it right in like this, across the bottom. There. So I'm making a pouch, like a kangaroo. Anchor that in. And anchor this side in. Always using those valleys to help me. And then take my tooth. Oh, and so see how he has a little lip there? See how his lip is a different color? I can go in and grab um, a different color. It's 
kind of a peachy color. Let's see if I can locate a peachy color. I have a bag of scraps here that I'm using. I have mohair. Well, here is a nice peachy color. It's a bit of mohair. I hate to waste it, but I'll, it'll, mohair works too, just so you know. Oh, you know what I can do here? I have a little light piece on this piece of, flo of uh, roving. I'm going to use this light section and wrap it around that lip. Or I could do darker too. Let's get this peeled off. The dark came with the light. Now, I don't want that to go all the way across. I want it to just be right at the edge of the lip. So I'm going to fold that back in. There. And again, I'm tacking this because I want it. I want to control where it goes and not have it disappear. Too much overworking it too fast. You can have it disappear. There. All right. So there's that. The teeth go in here. So I'm going to tuck a tooth in. Let's tuck the, I'm going to tuck the fluffy bit down because that'll help hold it. There's a single tooth. There, there's his tooth in. And I will push that in to his face, anchoring it in. Push it in with my needle felting tool, but not too far because I don't want to lose the teeth completely. And there, and then there's the lip. And I'm going to just lightly tack that in. But more strongly, see how I want that to disappear? So I push that in far and I can layer another thing on. And then I start tacking this in, but not too far. Alright, I'm going to look at comments. He kind of looks like an alien right now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to check comments because I haven't been able to see comments. Put that down. Oh, no, that's funny, Kathy. Um, All right, good. You haven't said anything. I don't know. Is this helpful or not? So I've showed you an eye. He's really, he looks like something off of an alien movie right now because he um, needs finish work. But those are the parts. So tooth, I showed you how to do an eye. I showed you how to set him up. Now, everything else, let's see, what else is there? Oh, his little warts. That, oh, oh, let me show you again. For his, um, for his stem, just to do his little stem, it's just a bigger wadge. Ugh. I might have to use my scissors. Um, for his stem, it's just a big wadge of green. I just picked a big spot and roll it up into a tight thing and I it, it stays separate most of the time. I will felt it there, see? There it is. You just felt it into a big tube. Don't felt the bottom because that's the part you want to leave flanges to get it connected to the pumpkin. But to the top, at, up to the top part of your stem, you can felt a lot and make it really rigid. And then see how this is cut? I cut that off with a pair of scissors to give the blunt top to make it look like it had been cut out of the pumpkin patch. The nose warts, just little teeny bits of green with the needle felting and then needle felted on. All the teeth are the same. I took a little piece of green to put into his teeth and I just took my needle felting tool later and just poked that in there. But everything on him is done this little way, even though he looks a little homeliness right there, everything is done the same. Even these little tendrils is just little bits of green plopped on there with my, with the triangular needle felting tool. That's it. That's all that's required. And, um, I will try. My intention has been to, um, to do a time elapse video so that you could just watch me make it and then put it up on YouTube. We'll see if I manage that today. It needs to be because we only have, what do we have, a week left for Halloween? Week and a half, I think. 
So if you want to get your little pumpkin guy out and ready for Halloween, you should probably do it. Or you could save him and do him. Doesn't look like we're going to get trick-or-treating this year. So you can save him and uh, make him be the Halloween celebration.
I just did that completely silently. I may voice over it later, but here is the pumpkin I showed you this afternoon. And here is the pumpkin I finished and started this afternoon. All, every pumpkin will be individual. My pumpkins don't even match. But there you go. Two pumpkins for this season. I think this guy looks a little angrier. What do you think? Goodbye.